any time now. Well, that what you hear right there, I've written this song not, not for sticks. It was never intended to be a stick song. It was my wife's birthday, um, and I wanted to give her a present for her birthday in lieu of buying jewelry, if you catch my drift. So I wrote the song real quick, and um, I called up John and Chuck Panazzo, the bass player and the drummer in Sticks. The guitar players were off on vacation. I said, I have this song, I want to demo it. I'm just going to give it to her on Real to Real for her birthday. And I said, okay. So we, we show up at the studio, uh, and the grand piano was out of tune, because they'd written on a grand piano. And in the corner was uh, Bobby Whiteside, whoever he is, was his Fender Rhodes, which I'd never even played before. And so they, they rolled it out, <clears throat> and they just rolled tape, and all that noodling in the beginning, I was, I was just noodling around. I wasn't thinking about writing a song to be heard by anyone other than my wife. So there it was, recorded the whole, the track, and, um, I sang all the background harmonies because John, because John and Chuck weren't the singers, but J.Y. and Tommy were the singers. So, there it was. I did it. Mixed it. Her birthday party, all the friends and relatives were gathering around and, um, surprise, played the song, Real to Real. And all the people went, my relatives, uh, the friends, they all went, oh my God, Dennis, that doesn't suck nearly as much as we thought it would. So I took that as a good sign, considering they're my friends and relatives. So I played for the guys in the band. He said, yeah, that's a good song. Uh, the record company heard it, and they said, we, we'd really like that to be on the album. So then what ensued is what we call demo poisoning, which means you make a demo that's so good, you try to re-record it, you can't capture the magic. So what we did was we kept the demo as is, even with flaws and all, because there seemed to be something that people appreciated. Tommy <clears throat> came in and played this, that guitar solo. And the record you've heard on the radio for the last, I don't know how many years, is the demo, with me singing all the background parts. That's all me, because we were afraid to change it. Um, had I written it for sticks, it would have been a power ballad. There'd been big guitar chords on it because but because the guitar players weren't there and then like I said I had fear of changing it and, and, and had people say oh well you screwed it up now you big dummy so that was the song and um, so when I got on the record and the record company said we're gonna release it as the first single and it set the record for the most radio stations ever to, to add a record in its first week. It was a, a, a wonderful thing to happen, but like really like six weeks later, somebody came on and broke the record. But to that, to that date, that happened. And so it went on to be our only number one hit record. And um, it won, won the People's Choice Award of 1980 for best song. And I uh, got to go on TV and uh, be in the audience with like Orson Welles and Jane Fonda and people like that were the People's Choice Awards, pretty cool. And uh, there it is. It's for many people who, who, who like this kind of stuff, who like those romantic ballads, there's one for you. It's a song about separation and loving someone and missing someone when you have to be away for whatever reason. Babe, babe, he loves you. That's me imitating Paul McCartney. Didn't work. Thanks.